Best of R slash Entitled Parents Episode 54. Sorry for formatting. I'm on mobile. Also apologies for how long this is. From the time I was 5, a boy at my school was a bully and tormented me. There is so much crap he's done that I'll just say the ones that stick out the most just to give you an idea of the type of kid he was. When I was in kindergarten, after heavy rainfall, worms would be washed up onto the blacktop. I spent my recesses gently carrying worms back to grass so they wouldn't die when the sun came out. I had to be gentle picking up the worms or else they'd break so I'd very slowly and carefully pick them up. This brat would run in front of a worm I was going to pick up and stomp on it. I, being a really sensitive child, cried and went to help another worm. He jumped onto the worm as I was reaching to pick it up. I went to the teacher and she told me to play somewhere else. After a few more worm deaths I gave up trying to help because I realized he'd only kill them and the teacher wouldn't do anything so I sat down and cried because I just wanted them to go home to their families. Teachers always said to tell if we were being bullied so, as a young child, I'd tell the teachers any time a kid did something mean. When I was in first grade, my teacher told me to stop tattletailing to get others in trouble. I didn't lie trying to get people in trouble. I just understood that I should tell an adult if something was wrong but that got me a bad reputation with some, not so nice, teachers. They thought I was lying because they didn't see kids being mean. Mainly because of lack of attention. I'd had some amazing teachers who loved me but the not so nice ones made my life hell for years to the point my therapist says a good portion of my PTSD stems from simply attending school. So anyways. The boy who killed those worms was basically evil when a teacher wasn't looking but as soon as anyone was paying attention, he acted like an angel. His parents were very big in the community. His father was one of the oldest families who lived in the village slash tiny town being third generation, so he was perfect and could do no wrong. He had a hobby of racing which is really important to the story. When we reached 6th grade. He began being quasi homeschooled so he could work more on his racing out of town but his family still had ties to the school so he'd come in when he was in town and spend lunches with his friends, hanging out with them. He'd do work packets that the school gave him when he was off in racing tournaments which was all but 6 weeks off school a year so we'd see him 30 odd days a year. He was expected to be a professional racer when he grew up and because of how small the town was, how everyone knew everyone and how his father was a highly respected figure, he was given special treatment for his attendance, or lack thereof, as long as his grades were good on the packets. He was always given special privileges, getting high on a roll, marking period average of 95 plus, every marking period. Men are not so great, Imo. Teachers always talked highly of him, saying how he was such a great person. They'd get mad and tell me to stop being so hateful towards him because I'd frown or groan whenever they'd speak highly of him, saying how I should be more like him. 8th grade was a rough year. I went from being an A-plus student to failing and transferring to a nearby special education school for high school. I was being raped at home the entire school year and couldn't cope at the time so I began acting out terribly, but I still had friends at the school I'd grown up in who would keep me updated. Fast forward to 11th grade when the bratty boy was planning to graduate early with high honors and a scholarship to a good university when everyone finally saw his true colors. It was simple enough. He'd come in every few weeks at lunch to hang with his friends, the popular kids. It was a really small school. Everyone knew everyone in town. I heard this from my best friend. So he comes to lunch with a cast around his dominant hand wrist. A kid asked him how he wrote his work down with a broken arm. The bratty boy proudly announced to his friends that my mom does all my schoolwork when I'm not here. Keep in mind he hasn't attended school full time since 5th grade. Well, his friends immediately told the guidance counselor. The guidance counselor took his signature from some card he'd given and asked for a signature from his mother. He, being absolutely dumb aff, went home and got her signature. The school board compared them to the work packets he'd do while away being tutored before races. It was blindingly obvious that his mother was the one writing his work. She wasn't just giving him answers. She was frigging writing them down for him. Long story slightly shorter because I'm sure you're already tired of reading. He gets into a heck ton of trouble. He's stripped of his private tutor and has to come to school full time. He was expected to do all his schoolwork and homework in front of a teacher so they could be sure it was him. 
We had a voluntary after school homework hour until 5 pm so kids who wouldn't have internet at home access can do homework and go home on the 5 pm bus. He was forced to stay for the homework hour daily. He no longer was on high on a roll or even on a roll. They tested him to see how much he'd actually learned since 5th grade. The answer is not much. He had the English level of a 6th grader, the math level of a 7th grader and everything else was still elementary, ages 5-10, school level. Because of how far behind he was, he had to come to school from 8am to 5pm for 2 years straight and yes, that means over the summer. He spent 2 full years studying 9 hours a day to just barely graduate at all. He lost his scholarship for obvious reasons and for those 2 years he went from the most popular boy who was going to be a famous racer to sleazy entitled mama's boy, TLDR. Entitled bratty boy as his mom do his school work for years when he was supposedly a very smart kid. He was dumb enough to say this to his, ex, friends who told on him. He lost his friends, was forced into two years of strict rules in school with teachers who now hated him when they learned how he was cheating the system. I get the mental satisfaction that those teachers were wrong about him and that I was right. Thank you. Next. First time poster. Long time lurker. My English should be perfect as I've been attending an international school for my whole life. Relevant to the story and if you're wondering I'm from Italy. I'm also on mobile. This just happened a few hours ago and I'm still fuming after this happened. As the title says, someone tried to steal my bike. Important things to know. I live in the center of Milan, Italy. My school is in the about 45 minutes from where I live and need to take my bus to go and come back from school with a welcome. 20 minutes ride to my house from the stop. I'm an avid cyclist and because of that my grandmother manages to scrape some money to give me this bike. I don't let anyone ride it because it's the last thing I have remembering her. On to the story. Cast, me, radioactive cockroach, F, best friend, ED, entitled dad, EK, entitled kid. The day goes just like normal I wake up, do my morning routine and start cycling to the bus stop where I meet up with my closest friend. Important and get on the bus, as always I attend school. Today was different, when I got to school I saw one of the mothers that brings her kid to the bus stop, this is EK, we never talked together since we never got alone in the previous years making us basically hate each other to death. This was strange as his mother, not entitled, had a very important job in my father's company and always had to be at work on time to have a meeting with my dad. As school finishes I get to the bus and sit with my friend, F. As usual EK gets on the bus and sits as far away as possible from us. As we get to the stop I see ED waiting for EK. Strange as he usually goes home alone on foot, but I really didn't think about it until I was walking towards my bike to unlock it. ED and EK approach me and F. The following conversation goes like this. This was all in Italian so I have to translate some words from my city's dialect that are commonly used. Me and F are talking about our passion of cycling and start to unlock our bikes. My lock is very old and sometimes I have to put quite a lot of force to open it. ED, high pitched scream what are you doing? Me, I turn around. What? ED, why are you trying to steal this bike? Me, it's my bike. ED, like hell it's not. Call Caso for those who are Italian. Stop or I'll call the police. Me, I lose my temper quite fast. WTF do you want? This is my bike and F can prove it. F. It's his bike and EK perfectly knows it's his. EK. No IT's not. It's my bike you little shit. I get up and show him the key to the lock ED tries to snatch it but I step back and then push him back. ED. Let's a scream as if I had killed someone help he assaulted Emmy and is trying to steal my son's bike. An important thing is that I'm obsessed with my weight and with my strength and often exercise at the gym to keep me in shape. Because of that I'm pumped as hell. What everyone says about me. This is my breaking point and start to cuss, both in Italian and I dialect, and shout blasphemies. Very common in young people. F, who has had anger issues for his whole life thankfully doesn't lunge at him like he do normally but chose to spit on him. Ed. Gets back up and starts high grunt heavily and decides it's a good idea to kick me in the abdomen. Since I already lost my temper I punched him in the face and he started crying like a little baby. EK also tried to do something but as he was trying to hit me F made him trip. I managed to open my lock out it in my back and started to ride away with my friend. 
Thing is that ED was one of the wealthiest men I knew and he could have bought the bike to EK with no problem but instead tried to steal it from me. Unfortunately since his mother worked at my father's company he was informed pretty straight away and called me I explained what happened on the phone and sided with me. I called the mother and said sorry for how I reacted she said that I overreacted but I was in my right and said to tell her if it ever happened again. Sorry if it was way I, 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 I longer than it should have been but I've been having a blast writing my first EP story. Thank you. Next. Some background information. My school. Germany. I went to before graduating offered an exchange program for everyone interested in spending two weeks abroad doing an internship. No language skills besides English were required. I was quite fluent in speaking French at that time and decided to join the French exchange, as did about six others. When arriving in France, in spring 2016, it became quite obvious that I had to translate for everyone in the group, as the French people lacked usable English skills and I was the only one speaking French in the group. Ironically my exchange partner was the only French guy who was fluent in several foreign languages, including English we had a great time together, besides his dad being a severe alcoholic who had quite an impulsive temper to say the least. All of the group except of me and the guy I was living with were girls, the ones from my school having been quite spoiled and used to high standards. Unfortunately some of the girls from my school, including ED were quite unhappy having to share a small room with one or two others. One girl's parents, not the ED, but still bloody entitled, even called our principal and demanded being put into another family. She had never talked to her exchange family, that were quite unhappily surprised by a visit of the principal of the French school, who explained to them that the girl did not want to stay any longer in their house due to the poor living conditions. Her French exchange partner burst into tears, her family was devastated, they were from Africa, IDK which country, but basically hospitality was like super important to them and hearing that a guest of their home did not enjoy living there was like a huge insult to them. They did not even want to let their daughter go to Germany, because they felt so miserable for being bad hosts. The girl herself was like super nice and super funny, so I managed to convince them by phone to let her daughter go to Germany and explain to them that they did nothing wrong. She stayed at a friend of mine's house and we were having a great time. Dot. All in all the exchange was a disaster for most of the Germans, especially for ED, who was angry that her exchange partner's family let's call her A, could not afford inviting her to fancy restaurants and that she had to pay for going out with her herself, they paid for food and cooked fresh every evening, she fucking lost it and told us that she would take revenge, fast forward to the summer of the same year, the exchange students arrived and were picked up by their exchange families at our school, ED was living in the mountains about 20 kilometers outside the city and so did A, we had a lot of time doing sightseeing with our partners, My parents bought huge amounts of wine, so we could party at our house every night. Unfortunately A was never allowed to join us, despite my parents offering to Ed's parents to pick her up and bring her back to them every time. We later found out that ED and EM were locking A up in her room, while going out. She even had to pay for the food. One evening EM asked A if she liked eating at a Spanish restaurant and she approved, yet mentioning that she was tight on budget and therefore could not afford. They left her at home, let her cook her own meal and went out eating on their own, again. When we met there again after 5 days she told us everything. I was talking to Edie and asked her what the fuck she was thinking she was doing. Her parents are among some of the wealthiest of our region and treating someone as badly, just because she has less money than her family is beyond inappropriate. In fact the little she and her family had, she was willing to share with her and in return she got locked down in her room. Despite at that point my parents were more than happy to invite her on every trip we were planning with others of the group on their behalf. She just told me to mind your own business and that she treated her the same way she was treated at her house. Which was basically a lie, as she was not locked down like an animal. Fast forward the last night of the exchange. We managed to take her on some assorted excursions. After arguing for hours with the M and ED for several hours each time and being told that they would not be hold liable. If anything happened to A and that she now is our problem. The last night there was a major soccer match between France and some other country on TV and we decided to go to a local shish bar to watch the game there. I was crying, as EM and ED forbade her join us. 
I was phoning them about 10 times and told them they should let her enjoy her last evening in Germany and that it would be much more effort for us to bring her home immediately, as two others were living in the same area that would join us that evening as well and we would basically had twice the effort if she would need to go home ASAP. EM cited and said, we wanted to spend the last evening with her together, as she is like a daughter to ED, but she can decide what she prefers. The answer was quite obvious, so we got the last instruction from EM that A needs to be at home by midnight. Well it got late, very late. The guys in the shish bar found out we had some French companions with us and played French music the whole time. Khalid, Kenny Arcana, etc. We were singing together, smoking a shitload of shisha and had a great time. I was home at 2.30am. On the door of her room she found a letter. Dear A, as we noticed you have not been home by the time we agreed on, this severe breach of trust really disappoints us, we no longer wish you welcome in this house, please pack all your stuff and leave by 7am tomorrow in the morning, there will be a bus departing by 7.15, you can buy yourself some food at the train station, we do not want to see you ever again, goodbye she was calling me while crying, I called the girl living closest to ED. Until the exchange they even were best friends, and asked her to pick her up in the morning, as buses are quite complicated where we live and it is quite irresponsible to ask a foreigner with bad English skills to take them you basically need to change three times in order to get to the train station, she agreed. In the morning we were all meeting in the hall of the train station, looking with shock and disgust at the letter presented to us by A. I then came up with a glorious idea to take one last group picture. Me in the middle holding the letter in my hands with the saddest face I could make and the rest of the group standing around me, pulling up the middle finger and grinning in the camera. We then uploaded the photo to a social media platform with the title Goodbye Forever and a link to the profile of ED. Literally 15 minutes later EM came furiously storming into the hall, approaching me from behind and shouting my name into my ear, whilst I was talking to one of our teachers, who was waiting with us. I was standing there in shock for a few seconds. She then grabbed my collar and pushed me against a wall, while sousing at me about how I ruined her family's reputation and demanded to tell her who was taking the picture. I was still baffled by the situation, so were the others. She then proceeded to shout through the hall in the most German sounding English ever, who took this picture? Who took this picture? The second time one brave girl to the group stood up to explain her that this was a group project while some random guy at the train station cafe was loosing it and approached EM to tell her to fuck off, as he wanted to enjoy his coffee, before going to work and could not stand her tantrum any longer. She left. Needless to say I got a major dressing down by my teacher, who was still shaking under shock. EM even demanded a written apology by everyone of the group for their rude behavior. I later handed the letter to our principal and explained him the whole situation as EM asked him to get me kicked out of school for the picture on social media. He then explained her to shut up and never approach him again or else her daughter would be kicked out of school, for severe misbehavior. I had lots of people to back me up on the story and was one of the best students at school, so the chances of me being kicked were low from the beginning. Last year I found out that every teacher knows the story of that infamous last day of the German-French exchange. One even approached me to ask if this was actually true, yet the story has evolved quite a bit and became much more brutal every time told. In the end it sounded like EM punched me in the face. Thank you, next. So relatively quick story, I was shopping at Target for some Pokemon cards since I've been collecting them for a while now and starting to build a big collection. A few weeks back there was a set released called Hidden Fates it was the best set there is right now. Unfortunately the set was limited edition and went away before I got my first paycheck. But then by some miracle they released one last Hidden Fates product. But there was only one left. I go to pick it up but here's when the EM and come in. EM. Oh I'm sorry but I was just about to get that for my son. Me. Oh I'm sorry but I was looking for this for a while but there's plenty of other sets here you can get. EM. Come on just be nice please and aren't you too old to be playing with children's toys anyways. Me. No I collect these cards and this set is important to me because it's the only set I don't have yet. I proceed to show photos of my collection to her but it starts to get visible that she's getting annoyed. EM. Look I don't really care about your little collection I just want the cards to give to my son. Me. Also starting to get annoyed. 
I told you already lady there's plenty of other cards for you to get but I'm buying this one no matter what you say. EM. Don't talk back to me or I swear I'm going to get your parents. Me. I came here on my bike now shut up already. I try to walk away at this point but she grabs my shoulder and pulls me back. EM. You're not going anywhere until you give me the cards. I push her away but then she starts screaming that I assaulted her. The manager comes over and talks to her while she tells him her lies. She told him that she got the cards first and that I yanked the cards out of her hands then kicked her away. The manager doesn't even let me tell my side of the story. He straight up yanked my arm and pushed me on the shelf. He told me to stay here while he tries to call the police. I try to talk but he tells me to shut up until I yell lock at the damn camera footage. He at least agrees and takes both of us to the security room where he tries to pull up the footage. EM tries to walk away but the manager tells her don't worry he's getting busted soon. The nerve of this man. He pulls up the footage and reveals that she pulled me. He apologized to the EM and let her just walk away then both of us walk out. I say that's it. And he replied with what do you mean? I say aren't you going to compensate me for almost calling the cops on me? Then you won't freaking believe this. This stupid oblivious manager straight up tells me what you really think you deserve anything. I then ask him for the footage so I can file a complaint. He says no why would I do that. I still sneak in and take the footage anyway and file a complaint. Now the manager still works there and the EM still shops there. I now shop at a new target. Thank you. Next. Backstory. My brother and his friend wanted to go ice skating. My mom told me to go watch over him to make sure he doesn't get hurt. So I did. Cast. Me. Bruh. Ed. Entitled dad. EDC. Ed's kid. B. Brother. F. Brother's friend. After a few minutes of watching B and BF. I spot ED and EDC out of the corner of my eye. Looking at me. I get uncomfortable and decide to wave at them. After a few minutes, ED whispers something into ECD's ear. Then he walks up to me. ED, excuse me, do you know how bad of a crime this is? Me, what? ED, stalking someone, especially children is bad. Me, I'm, not, stalking them. ED, yeah, right. I'm 17 but people tell me I look 19. So I guess he thought I was a grown man. ED, I will call the police. ED then walks up to B and F then says, excuse me, do you know this man? He then gestures to me, F actually has two rates so she seems really nervous, then starts texting. B, course I do, he's my brother, ED, if that's what he told you to say, he's lying. F, what the hell, if you're trying to kidnap us, it ain't gonna work. Again, she has two rates so she also has verbal tics. ED. Are you sure you know this man? B. You're an idiot. EDC suddenly walks over. ED. Stay out of this. EDC. Mom's waiting. ED. Give me a damn minute. EDC. Okay. Me. Seriously. Mister. Stop it. ED. Perverts like you should be burning in hell. So on 100. F. Fuck you. ED obviously doesn't know F has two ATTEs. ED. What did you say? Me, she has two ray TTEs, okay, F, I mean every word of it, B, I can see why, yep, that's just my brother being himself, ED, I don't know what Smoretz is, and it's a stupid excuse, some random dude notices the commotion, let's call him Joe, Joe, excuse me, I overheard the commotion and I couldn't help but see if I could be of assistance, ED, yeah, you can. This creep is planning to molest these children. Joe, do you have any evidence of that? ED, yeah, I saw him go up to these children. B, he's my fucking brother. Remember, these kids I'm watching are 11 and 10. I'm not surprised they'd act that way in this situation. Joe, looking at me now. So, these kids are your siblings? Me, the girl is my brother's friend. Joe, now talking to ED, sir. If they all say they know each other, they probably do. I'm going to have to call the police on you if you continue. B. Seems kind of drastic. ED took the threat seriously. He left and glared at me. Me. Thanks. Joe. Don't mention it. B. Thanks. After that we left. Joe. If you're reading this. Thanks. 
Thank you. Next. So this is my second time posting onto this sub. Just for clarification, English is my second language. I am really good at it though. TLDR at the bottom. Just some context. I recently turned 18 and me and my family, including cousins, uncles slash aunts and grandparents, all went for vacation in Mexico, specifically Huachalco. We stayed at an all-inclusive resort so I think that is why the entitled mom thinks she deserves everything. Anyhow, let's begin. EM, entitled mom, EB, entitled brat, 8 years old, male, me, me, hotel staff, HS, cousins, 1-3, C1, C2, C3. So we start off at the beach around 3pm on a really nice day, a few days before the New Year's. My cousins and I were sitting on the beach chatting and drinking. C3 was already slightly drunk. He was much older than me so I didn't care. So, I decide that since we are celebrating the New Year's we should celebrate with some cigars. So I go buy some cigars. Certain things at the resort are not part of the all-inclusive package. And bring back 5 Havana. Cuban cigars. We all start smoking when EB approaches us. EB, what are you guys doing? EB was wearing a wet bathing suit, no shirt, and some sunscreen on his body. C2, yeah, we're just celebrating the New Year's. EB, are you guys smoking cigarettes? He said smoking cigarettes really loudly like he had never heard about it before. C2, cigars, not cigarettes. They are different. EB, can I smoke one? C2, not here bro, you're way too young. EB, but I want to. C1, fed up, as he is short to temper, listen kid, can you leave us alone, EB, crying, I will tell my mommy, he then walked away, face red bawling his eyes out, C1 was really upset as he doesn't like making kids cry and it just ruined his enjoyment so he put out the cigar, C2, C3 and I are still smoking and drinking just talking about what the hell just happened, in about 10 minutes CM and EB arrive. And I don't mean this in a bad way, but EM looked pissed. She screamed. EM, what the fk did you just say to my angel? Me, excuse me. EM, are you deaf? Can you not hear you are? I said why did you tell my son that he can't smoke? I was very confused. Please, what are you supposed to do when a 40 year old entitled skid mark screams at you demanding to know why you did not give her 8 year old son a cigar to smoke? Me. Why would I give a child a cigar? EM. Because my angel deserves it. We are in an all-inclusive resort. He deserves anything he wants. So give him a cigar. C3. Listen here. I don't give a fk if you brat wants a cigar. Even though he is a minor and cannot have one. J2 robot bought them and are his so we do not need to give shit to you. EM had a look of horror on her face like if her entire family were murdered. EM. How dare you talk to Emmy like that? Since you have harassed Emmy, I will be taking one of your cigars. EM then tries to take one of the cigars. C1 stops her and tells her to piss off. I then say, me, get out of here. While this is happening EB begins to tug on EM's arm saying, EB, mommy, I don't even want to smoke then anymore. They smell really bad. EM does not even listen. She just keeps arguing with C2 and C3. C1 gets up and goes to find staff from the bar who can help deal with her. EM, you guys probably don't even know how to smoke cigars. C3, first of all, that's not your problem. And second, giving tobacco to minors is illegal. HS arrives with C1. Other people from the beach are just watching in awe. HS, what seems to be the problem here? EM then tells a completely fake story on how we took her cigars and are now harassing her and her angel. Me, that's bullshit, her and her son have been harassing us when we are trying to smoke. EM, you her. I can't believe that someone would ever take cigars from us and say that we are harassing you. A nice old man approached and said, nice man, she's lying. Things boys were just sitting here smoking when this lady showed up and started cussing out of her mind. Not to mention, I saw the boy, me, bring the cigars. HS, J2 robot, do you have the receipt? I didn't even think about that. Me. Yeah, here. EM's face turned white. She said nothing, dumped our ash tray and drinks onto the sand and walked away with EB. Who was crying? The hotel staff follow EM. 
She was maybe kicked out of the hotel. I am not sure. I thanked the nice man. C1 lit up the last cigar as we had as a spare. And we all finished our damn cigars. Moral of the story. Don't give in to people just because they are yelling. TLDR. Kid wants to smoke a cigar. We say no. EM gets mad. Tries to take a cigar from us. Probably got kicked from the hotel. Hopefully. Thank you. Next. Disclaimer. I'm far from being a native English speaker. Be kind to the mods. If it's not EP related enough, feel free to remove the post. I'm 43, French and I do not have a driving license. Yeah you are right that's somehow incredible, but I lived a long part of my life in the center of Paris where we have a quite good subway network. I also used to rollerblade a lot, to visit friends, to go to and come back from work and do basically anything I could do with these. Also, my wife could drive, so why try doing something I do not like, anyway. I moved to south of France near Nice not so long ago. There, the public transportation is more erratic. So I'm currently in the process of acquiring a driving license. I'm not there yet. The process is expensive and quite harder than the one in USA I think. Until I get it, I have to go to work using a scooter. A nice little scooter. 50cc of course because I can't get anything else if I don't have a driving license. For those who don't know 50cc means you are driving at 50 kmph max, unless you illegally modified your scooter. The fun part is that the French Riviera is not a plane, at least when you are not right along the beach. It's more of a chaotic place with big hills, rough cliffs, forest everywhere and mountain tracks. So, most of the time I'm not even making 50 kmph. Let's say 30 kmph is closer to my average speed, and it annoys drivers so much most people just try to bypass me in the most ridiculous situations we're going up in a curve with no visibility let's overtake we're on a road that is more made for one lane than two there is heavy traffic on the opposite lane let's overtake there will be five cms left enough and i'm not letting them go so i wave hunk sometimes give them fingers even when they are reckless or just try to show them why they are wrong I just can't let them go when my security is not respected. Some of them stop and start yelling, cursing, blaming me for my bad driving, the quality of my scooter and start sending insults at me, or even try to pick a fight. And here is why this is related to entitled parents. I often hear, do you see what you made me do in front of my children? Every time I hear this I think about this subreddit. How entitled you have to be to blame people of your bad behavior in front of your kids. My rant.